Hello everyone, my name is Anton Peck and welcome back to another fun and exciting episode of Artwork in the Digital Format. Um, I'm working in Sketchbook Pro as you've probably seen in the past couple of videos and in this case I am going to take a break from the Red Dragon, although don't worry I'm going to get right back to it in the next few episodes, but I wanted to um, talk about the process that I use since I'm sure there's probably some curiosity over why I choose Sketchbook Pro. Uh, for the most part, it's just a tool. I, I love uh, experimenting with all different kinds of programs, and this is just happens... <clears throat> pardon me. This just happens to be one that I, I've landed on that I, I really like for its simplicity and its clean interface. Uh, Photoshop does a very w good job. I mean, I grew up... I grew up, I, I spent a lot of years doing illustrations in Photoshop, and it's a fine tool. Um, I, I like Painter. I appreciate what that does, although um, it's a little out of my budget right now, and never quite got the hang of what I've seen some of my peers create out of that tool. Um, for example, if you've ever seen Greg Newman's artwork, uh, you should definitely look him up if you've not heard of him. He's an amazing, amazing, god, awesome illustrator. That he paints these, um, these, the people and and things like Harley Davidsons and eagles and just really awesome manly stuff. And um, and he's got a manly beard too. But he uses painter, and the stuff that he makes just blows me away every time. It's awesome. Um, but today it's Sketchbook Pro for us. So, why don't we just go ahead and get started? As you can see, I've got a completely blank canvas. Nothing like starting clean. My goal is going to be to um, recreate a goldfish that I saw a photo of. Um, it happens to be a photo of um, the guy that I know on Twitter. He happens to be fairly... Uh, I don't know, well-known in the web industry. It's uh, Mark Bolton. His uh, fish's name is Frank, which I think is pretty awesome. Anyway, I, I like goldfish. They're fun creatures to create. Uh, to, to create. To Well, they're, they're fun creatures to create in illustration, but they are also fun to have in a fish tank at home while you feed them, and they do their little mouths open and closed. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm getting completely off the subject. Um, let's just get started. Why not? Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just fill this with stuff, this background. Actually, I'm going to do a flood fill. Definitely do not want black. That would be bad. I need something else. Well, I'm just going to pick a color here. Mocha. But I'm going to modify that mocha. So it's a little more desaturated. Something like that. I'm just going to go like that. Now I'm going to go back to that texture brush, which is pretty well as big as it can get, and bring that color down just a bit. Actually, let me try it this way. So there's multiple ways you can access your colors. Happy, happy little colors. Um, I'm going to throw in some shapes. These don't have to be very specific. They're just going to be for the background. So uh, let's just see here. I don't know if I'm really digging this texture brush. But the art is consistency. So... Um, eventually, we're going to be painting over it so much that you won't even notice it. Now, one of the things I like to do, this is a technique that I'm going to show you, and this applies to actually many of the programs that you'll work in. Usually, you're going to find different shades of, of um, opacity from the brush that you're using. I mean, some brushes are very hard and, and defined, but in this case I can pluck out 
a lighter color that was left behind right in there. And I can start going back over it. Oh, let me let me talk about this thing real quick. What I'm doing here, pressing the space bar and <clears throat> uh, excuse me. As I roll my uh I've got a Wacom tablet here, the uh uh oh it's what model is this? The Intuos three, I believe, nine inch roughly. And as I'm rolling around the outside edge of this palette, it, it kind of sticks to the mouse. You'll find it follows. But this, if I tap and drag it around, that's that's just to move the canvas around. I'm not actually I'm just moving the canvas, that's it. But in here, that's that's my zoom. And I kind of like this is all just with the space bar. And then this little this tiny little spot right here. And you'll find I, I get crazy with this sometimes. Uh, this is the rotate. And it snaps when it's at zero. So I can zoom out and you're going to see woo, woo, woo. But it it's so sensitive. It doesn't bother me too much, though. Anyway, back to what I was doing. Um, I grabbed a lighter shade because I just wanted to add some of this texture up here. La -di -di. Texture, texture, texture. Lovely stuff. Um, I'm basically going to keep throwing all kinds of random textures in here. Like this thing, what does this do? I just, sometimes I forget which, what the brushes actually do. It's nice to experiment. And just say, zip, see? And you know what? I did not like that. Nope, I did not like that at all. That's what undo is for. Oh, hey, you know what? Let's just go ahead and save this as a file right now. Oh, yeah. See? Frank. Save. No indication that maybe I had already uh, practiced this a little bit. Actually, I, I did this the other night. I have to be honest with you guys. I, I did this the other night, and... Um, I completely botched up my recording settings so that the the speed of the video was it was less than five frames a second, and it was ridiculous. I mean, you're not going to watch that. It was chunk, 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 chunk. So, you know, here I am trying to talk seriously, and in the meantime, for me, I, I mean, while I was doing it, I didn't notice that the um, the brush was all. Uh, the, uh, the speed of the frame rate was all messed up. But after I watched it, I was like, no, that's that's definitely not getting uploaded. That's terrible. Got to have some standards here, people. Standards. Um, so that does something interesting. Oh, hey, that's not too bad. But let's make it bigger. Let's zoom out. And I'm just going to get a rough shape. And I'm going to grab some colors in here. And play around with that. So the style of painting that I'm doing, um, which is different than the video of the Red Dragon. Now, see, let me finish my sentence here. I mean, I'm talking to myself, okay? So it's going to be rather random. Sometimes I, I wander off multiple sentences in different directions, and it gets kind of annoying. But back to my point, the Red Dragon video was a scan and in that particular case with the scan, I like to have very precise lines and I, I tend to do more comic book style artwork that, um, I don't know, it kind of, it looks cool. But there are times uh, with more of a concept art style that you just want to get rough with it. You just want to get really rough with the colors so that you're not doing anything really specific all the time. You're just... 
you're seeking out shapes. You're, you're feeling it out, seeing what works and what doesn't work. And you tend to work, well, uh, and you in a figurative sort of sense, um, we artists tend to work so that um, it's very ambiguous at first and it's all on one layer and some sometimes we add layers I can do that over here with the add layer but with this background I'm just going to keep um, massaging it I guess is the term uh, until I see something that I really like I'm gonna push around the colors and I'll keep painting over it and painting over it and refining it until it looks about like I want it to see here's a synthetic brush I don't care for that. That's well, I care for it, but not yet. Undo that a few times. Also, I notice that one falls off very fast. See, watch if I do this. That's a very short stroke. That's going to be something I want to watch out for later. I can actually edit that option here. Uh, well, paint load, size. Eh, I don't know. Some of these options are a little bit elusive to me anyway I want to get a little bit of green going on in here uh, nice I'm gonna start with a dark green and I believe I have an airbrush in here there it is what's the size uh, here we go nice and large um, before I get into this I'll talk about these two little doohickeys I mean, it's they're they're kind of strange. They look like um, something you'd gaze through. They look, there's a couple of binoculars, 3D glasses. Uh, this one controls the size of the brush. You just you you tap on it and then drag left and right. And this one is a another type of color chooser. Uh, sometimes I use it. Sometimes I don't. A lot of times I'll just come down here and use this but if I want to be more precise uh, see this is not too shabby I'm gonna get even darker with that maybe even wander into the blues start getting a cooler color Uh, something interesting about Sketchbook Pro is watching how the colors tend to interact with each other. It, and it really depends on the brush that you're using at the time. Now see, this almost gives it a, a foggy look. That's kind of cool. I dig that. Uh, don't dig that. But if I grab that, now see if I get this big brush here. This is a um, it's a smudge brush, and it really smudges. So now this is where I'm just going to be pushing around the paint. And if you actually do what I just did there, where you pull it off the edge, you can just push it back, or you can do you know. Command Control Z and say sorry that's not gonna happen now this setting is almost a little too large so I'll probably bring it down um, I forget what this one does you're going to find out. I, I forget what brushes do all the time. I kind of, I, I don't really think about it too hard. I'm just going to get some of this extra color going on in here. Oh, now see, here's a great example of what I was talking about as far as the brushes interacting. Um, since I have color here and I've chosen this particular brush even though I've got um, the shade of brown loaded up on it when it interacts with the green 
it starts to mix itself. And you can get some very interesting results with that. It's also um, adjusting itself according to the size or the amount of pressure that I'm applying. Oops, I meant to do an eyedropper there. There we go. Ah, trying to grab a good color. Now see, this probably doesn't look like I'm doing much at this point. But I've got a good feeling that this is going to turn out kind of interesting. So let me go back to another smudging brush. And just work that paint all around the canvas. It's similar to actual painting, which, for the record, I know people that are actual painters. And I can tell you straight up honest that uh, for what you have seen me do digitally, which, I mean, there's people that blow me away for this, but when it comes to actual painting, yeah, forget it. I am not good at that. I mean, I I do ink washes, but I'm talking about oil paints, like real, honest to God, Bob Ross stuff, the type of oil paints that just, you know, make you think, wow, that's like a Van Gogh or something really deep and awesome. Let's get back into here. Let's kind of smudge this up a little more. Because I like the texture here. It's interesting. I think I want to bring some more shadows in here, though. And I am definitely, definitely going to get some more texture going on there. Oh, here's another way of um, finding brushes. You can even load up a lot of custom brushes in here, which is pretty spectacular. But that's, I mean, pretty routine for a lot of applications. Ah, this looks about like what I want. There we go. Scratches. So what you can do is, if you have a favorite, you can just... You can drag it right over here, anywhere you want, which is pretty cool. It's pretty awesome, man. Um, let's see here. Let me play around with uh, that. It's just got to be subtle. Kind of bring it up a little bit. I don't know. I'm not totally thrilled with this. But like I said, I'm going to keep going over it and over and over it until something looks right. Uh, I'm going to bring the, the color in here a little. You know, it's really kind of funny slash annoying while I'm recording this and you probably have no idea and you probably can't hear it but it's very distracting to me my kitty cat 
my sweet little lovey dovey kitty cat is outside the door begging to be let in and I'm thinking kitty cat why are you doing that his name's Henry by the way he's a good cat he's just um, a bit needy In the moment of silence, while I just continue to um, work in some stuff, one of the tips I've learned about being an artist is, well, for one thing, um, don't be afraid to experiment, and don't ever criticize your own work until you feel like it's done. Like right now, I could look at this and say, oh, this is crap. I mean, this is absolute crap. This is terrible. But I'm not going to do that because um, I know it's incomplete. It's not where I want it. So if it's crap, then why would I want to finish it? i got to keep doing it. Um, but the other thing is don't be afraid of contrast. I mean, that's kind of what makes a painting interesting. Don't be afraid to play with it. Don't be afraid to uh, try some things. Oh, that was a smudge. I just realized I had a smudge on there. What does this do? Uh, no. Um, I'm undecided on what I want to do next. I mean, I want to get to the... Um, let's see, that's when I used I used scratches. I want to try the HR now. I want to get into painting Frank the awesome little goldfish but I want to kind of nail down this background first Now this background is just completely fictional. There's no um, photo reference for this at all. And even though I do have a photo reference of Frank the Goldfish, I am going to work entirely from memory, which is going to be tricky. Um, this one I'm going to bring down. I might bring down the opacity. Yeah. Just to kind of add in some of those crunchy highlights. Crunchy? That's a that's a tactical term right there. That's what that is. You can totally quote me on that one. Anton says to make things crunchy. It's like cereal. Texture. And of course, it's time for some, uh, actually I'm going to get much, much smaller with this airbrush. And I'm going to do some of those blue highlights. This is kind of, this is underwater, and this is also a background, so I don't want it to be too sharply focused. It, 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 this is not the focal point of the illustration. This is simply to make things just a little bit more interesting. Let's 
that's an interesting look, I guess. Adding those rays. A little crazy there with the dark. Okay. All right. I could probably keep refining that, but I don't think I will. Not right now. Actually, maybe I'll just do one more thing. We're going to get back to our texture. I might even play around with, uh, uh, let's see, hmm, try to decide how I want to do this, maybe I'm not worried about it right now, make a new, t new layer, and I'm going to lock my background, and this is going to become Frank. So let's see here. I've got the new layer and I've got, I need to choose a color. I'm going to go with a nice tangerine. See what I like about the um, apple color picker is, you know, to get these crayons here that you can start with as a base, but then you can go to something like this and certainly tweak it. I think that's more of a natural color. The, the regular color is a little bit too intense. Okay. Now, the big question of the year is which brush to use. Maybe that's part of the problem is with um, Sketchbook Pro, maybe, I mean, it, um, choices are always a good thing, but sometimes having too many brushes can be discouraging. All right, so it's time to just, just get a shape going. Uh, let's see here. Just gonna block everything in here. Okay, so there's kind of a rounded, bulbous, fat belly. There's a fat belly right there. See his fat belly? Belly. And then this is a body. I'm gonna put a mouth right over here. This is gonna be the ridge of the back. Um, the fin is gonna go right here. And another little fin is going to go right down there. And then the back fin, we're going to go here and there. Hmm. Now, the nice thing about having this on a new layer is that I can move it. Oops, that was scale. There we go. This is accomplished by holding V. And then you get a very similar sort of uh, palette. I can rotate it, scale it. I don't know what that does. Oh, it stretches it. Whoops. 
something I don't use. Okay. Oh, that'd be right there. Back to my brush. And in this case, I'm going to just, I'm going to work the colors. I want to thicken up the colors in here because I think there's a little bit of transparency. And I'm not worried about accuracy at this point. Actually, I wonder if I should have just created the body first and then added the fins later. Maybe I'll do that. Okay. There we go. This will actually help me out. That's hard to do. Okay. Um. I keep pausing this so I can go check on my cat. I know you're probably not noticing it, like, oh, what's he doing? What's he talking about? Uh, time just disappeared for me. Um, okay, back to work. Back to work. Let me lock the transparency. Yeah, oh, I don't want to lock the trans. I want to. Oh, forgot how to. There it is. For crying out loud, being an airhead. And bring in some of the lighter colors. Actually, I'll use the airbrush on this one. Just kind of do this. I'm going to bring this over here because I think I'm going to use it a lot. Uh, let's see. Now when I get into these richer colors. There's that trick of grabbing shades to fade from one to another. Let's see, I need a really, really gold. We're going to bring some gold in through here. Uh, I want more, more saturated. And then on the side. I'll just keep working that around. You know, the interesting thing about uh, fish, if you look at them enough, is they're not just one color. They tend to have all these different incredible ranges of colors. And it, even when you add stuff in, it doesn't, it's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to make it look more amazing.
Now, what's kind of neat, I've got, uh, let me see here, this, yeah. This brush that I'm going to push things around with. Actually, I'm going to throw a texture on there first. So I kind of want to simulate uh, scales. Let's see, throw some of this in there. can't be too smooth either because they have all these different um, sort of natural body shapes okay so I got that done now I'm going to go back into this um, this this brush where I push things around. And I'm just going to do these little uh, smudges. And you probably can't see what's going on here, but I'm basically creating the scales. You know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to grab a darker color with a very fine pen and just throw some that was not what I wanted okay maybe maybe this one something like this with a lower opacity it's almost invisible Just keep working that around. Doing this sort of artwork is uh, its a little bit like when you're trying to focus on something far away. Uh, you're, you're looking at it and it's all blurry and then uh, you get closer and closer and eventually you start seeing the smaller, more refined details. I think that's what makes it so fun and fabulous. Is that things just start working. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it should. Okay, so there we have something of a body. Now, let's start adding some features onto our little guy. Um, I'm going to go back to this pen, and I'm going to go with a very, very dark Actually, I'm going to grab the dark out of here because um, that'll kind of connect the fish with its surroundings. And I'm going to start drawing the eye. Now, I have to decide right now where I want this eye. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make another layer just to be safe. And see, I can sketch. And I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to drop the opacity on it, too. Um, so this is about this is about where I want a mouth. Like 
like that. And our eye is going to be like right there. And our other fin is going to be right here. So I'm going to use a little bit of white so I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm draw another fin that's going to be up here. And the, the tail fin is going to be curved. You can see I've got some work because I'm going to start filling in some of these details. Put a little fin in under there to uh, be the left fin and the right fin. And then you can see that fat belly. See, I might want to bring that out a little bit. So I'll use the push tools to fatten them up. So, um, I think for this episode, I might wrap it up right about here. And then uh, in the next episode, we will finish up the goldfish and talk about other things for the future. What do you think? Uh, and anyway, you know what? That reminds me, uh, not to go off on a segue, um, but I will because that's what I do and it's my channel, so what the hell um if you have any thoughts if you have any comments if you have any feedback by all means let me know okay you just follow me on on google plus uh uh anton peck or um my youtube channel which you can also find if you just search for anton peck um, i'm on facebook i'm on twitter just search for yeah guess what anton peck that's right because that's what i use on the social networks these days the it's what the, the kids are using so um you know track me down uh, send me a message say hey dude um i like your stuff but here's what you could do better or hey just you know you suck dude don't forget just drop it quit quit while you're in no i don't want you to do that because that'd be a blow to my ego um i actually kind of like what i do this is fun I, this is a lot of fun and i think that's the whole point because I don't claim, I'm not claiming to be any good at this. I'm just saying I'm doing this because I want to be better at it. And what way to get better at it than to just keep doing it. And with that, I'll let you go. Okay? Have a good one. See you on the next episode.